ones, you might expect to see these in an exam. So they're both using simultaneous equations, okay? This one is question 14. Um, I asked you to have a look at this one, but I think you might have found it a bit tricky. It is tricky. People always find this kind of one tricky. So we've got two particles here, and it says P and Q are moving along the same straight horizontal line with constant acceleration. As soon as we see that phrase, constant acceleration, we should start thinking about the fact we can use through that. So we've got P is going at 2 and Q is going at 3.6. So I think I actually might start writing some of these things down. I've got P and I've got Q. We've been told that the acceleration of P is 2 and the acceleration of Q is 3.6. When time is equal to 0, in other words, at the beginning of this journey, P passes through a point A with speed 4 meters per second. So what is 4 meters per second referring to for P? What letter is it referring to? U, yeah, it's saying that the initial speed, when time is zero, it is four meters per second. This is gonna be super important. One second later, Q passes through A with speed three meters per second. So that sounds like the initial speed of Q is going to be three meters per second and it says moving in the same direction as P. Write down expressions for the displacements. Displacements is which letter? S. S. So write down um, expressions for the displacements of P and Q from A in terms of T. In terms of T, this means that T is going to be in your answer, right? When T seconds is the time after P has passed through A. So for P, the amount of time it's been traveling after it passed through A is just going to be t seconds. That's the variable that we're going to use. But now we're going to have to think about how long Q has been traveling for after it passes through A. And we're going to have to come back to this sentence. It says, one second later, Q passes through A. So imagine that P has been traveling for four seconds after it passed through A. How long has Q been traveling for after it's passed through A? Yeah, t minus 1. So if it was 4 seconds, it would have been going for 3 seconds. If p had been travelling for 10 seconds after it had passed through a, q would only have been travelling for 9 seconds after it had passed through a. So if p has been travelling for t seconds after it passed through a, q has been travelling for t minus 1 seconds. So really when I'm saying t here, I'm just saying the time. I'm not saying t equals t minus 1. I'm saying, I'm saying the time is equal to t minus 1. So that's the distinction that we've got here. We've got two unknowns. We don't know how long they've been traveling for, and we also don't know their displacements. But we know that the time that Q has been on its journey after it went through A is going to be one second less than however long P's journey has been because it started one second later. And the thing that we've been asked to find out is what S is equal to for both of them. Who can remember what the formula is that connects these together without having to look at the formula page? S, is equal to UT plus a half a t squared. S equals ut plus a half a t squared. So this is going to be good for us to answer part a. It's going to give us an expression for the displacements of p and q in terms of t. So for this one that we've got here, our s equals ut plus a half a, a half of a, which is just 1, t squared. And for the other one, we get s equals ut, so that's ut, plus a half of a, what's a half of 3.6? Good, plus a half a, t squared. So the expressions for the displacement are this bit, and this bit that we've got here. So it makes sense that Q has got this 2 minus 1 because it hasn't been traveling for as long as P. And we're referring to T, in this case, as the amount of time since P passed through A. So those are the two expressions for part A. It's only two marks, but that's a lot of work for those two marks. And in fact, once you've done those two marks, the rest of the question should become a lot easier. We could simplify it, but for that stage, we don't, we don't necessarily need to. We might need to do that in the second stage that we've got here. It then says, for part B of the question, find the values of t 
where the particles meet. When particles meet, what can you tell me about S, U, V, A, or T? The S's must be equal to each other because they have travelled the same distance or they have displaced the same amount. So I know that for part B, when they meet, displacement of P equals the displacement of Q. So I can go and I can actually make those two things I've underlined in purple, I can make them equal to each other. So I get 4t plus t squared equals 3t minus 1 plus 1.8t minus 1 squared. And now's the stage where Ishraq said we should expand and sort of simplify some of these things. So if I just sort out what I've got on my right-hand side here, I get 3t minus 3 plus 1.8. What is t minus 1 squared? Good, so we want to try and be able to do those uh, in our head like that. So we get 4t plus t squared equals 3t minus 3 plus 1.8t squared minus 3.6t plus 1.8. And what kind of equation have we got? A quadratic. So we know for a quadratic, get everything all onto one side, and then what will you do? Solve using calculators, because we want to save time, okay? So if it's in an algebra kind of context, you know how to solve quadratics, but here we're just going to solve it. So I'll take away the t squared, so I get 0.8t squared, and I'm going to take away 4t. So let's just be really careful. I've got 3t minus 3.6 which is minus 0.6, and then I minus 4, so I get minus 4.6t, and then I've got minus 3 plus 1.8, which is minus 1.2, just with that rearranging that's happened there. And then it would be great if you can grab your calculator and remind yourself of how you use the polynomial equation solver on your calculators. Who can be bothered to use the quadratic formula when we've got these to do this for us? And as soon as anyone's got it solved, shout it out for me. What am I doing? It's because you said 6. I've, I've merged both my answers. Thank you for that. Minus 0.25 or 6. So the answer is 6. But we know that t has got to be a positive number. So t is 6 seconds for that one. So that was part B of the question. The hard bit was the beginning part of saying that Q was T minus 1. This time we had two unknown things. We had S and we had T. And then part C of the question. Shh, shh, shh. Part C of the question says, find the distance of A from the point where the particles meet. Just substitute T into one of these equations that we've got here. And it will tell us what the displacement was when they met each other. So that now tells us, for part C of the question, we know that t is equal to 6. So which one would you prefer to use, Arifal? I'd prefer to use that one as well. So we know that s is equal to 4t plus t squared. So that's 4 times 6 plus 6 squared, which is 60 metres. OK? So we get 60 metres for that one. So they love simultaneous equations ones. They love simultaneous equations ones. If you want to recognise it's a simultaneous equation, it's because you've only been given two things. You've only been told, I think, in this case, we had the acceleration and the initial speed. We wanted to find out something to do with time and then something to do with displacement. It's OK if you don't know two things, as long as you have two equations that links those things together. The other one that we wanted to have a look through was question 15, which I said was similar to one of the examples that we had done earlier on in the booklet, OK? 
So can I go on to the next slide in just a second? Remember, if you need to, you can always look at these on Padlet to get some of these things written up and completed as well. OK, so this was one from your, um, your homework. It says, in an orienteering competition, a competitor moves in a straight line past three checkpoints, P, Q, and R. So I've got P, Q, I'm going to, what, sorry? Did I not say to try question 15? Oh. I said odd questions. I said do the odd questions and try 14. And then I said hint for question 13. Which one is this? 15. Did you do this one anyway? Did people try this one? Which was the one that people wanted help with? Was it 13? 14. Should we do this one as well anyway? Because this is the one that was, did I put the hint for the wrong thing? I said hint for question 13. Who knows? Let's have a look what I'm saying here. We'll do it anyway. I just want to see what 13 was. Oh, yeah, so 13, you were able to use that. But question 15 is similar as well. Should we just do this one quickly anyway? Um, so you were meant to do this one. The distance between P and Q is 2.4 kilometers. And Q and R is 11.5 kilometers. The competitor is modeled as a particle with constant acceleration. She takes one hour to travel from P to Q and 1.5 hours to travel from Q to R. And we're going to now try and find out the acceleration of the competitor. So this is another simultaneous equations type question. Now, I know I've said something to you before. What have I said to you about all of these units? Convert them. Convert them. Now, in this particular example, it's actually not going to matter if you convert them or not because everything is like sort of matching you normally have meters and seconds and then your speed would be meters per seconds here we've got kilometers and hours so our speed will be kilometers per hour and the acceleration will be kilometers per hour per hour so although you normally should convert them in this particular one it's just going to be a little bit simpler if we just leave them in these, in these values and just be careful of the units that we've got at the end. So we're going to try and find the acceleration and her speed at the instant that she passes through P. Can you think of what the two journeys are going to be that we need to compare here? P to Q and, and P to R. Good, because we need to have something shared, and the shared thing is going to be about the, the initial speed that she has when she goes through P. So between P and Q... Uh, let's not start off with you. Let's start off with what the time is. So the time is 1. How much is the time to go from P to R? 2.5. To go all the way from here to here is 2.5. We know that the displacement here is 2.4, and the total displacement is 13.9. Now, do they share the same acceleration? Yeah, because the whole way... She is moving with constant acceleration. So from here to here, the acceleration is A. And from here to here, the acceleration is also A. We know at this beginning stage here, the initial speed is U. So here we are. We've got another situation where we've got two things, but we also don't know two things. So I'm going to say the initial speed here is U. And it's got the same initial speed here because it's the same beginning point for P. Then we're just going to do the very similar thing to what we had before of just doing simultaneous equations. And we've got S, U, A, and T. So we know it's going to be S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. So for my first one, from P to Q, I get S equals U, T, which is just U, plus a half A, T squared. So that's going to be T squared is 1 and a half a, so it's just going to be plus a half a. From p to r, s is 13.9. We then get ut, which is 2.5u. And then we get plus a half times a times t squared. So we need to do our a half times 2.5 squared. That's a half times t squared which is 3.125 plus 3.125a. What are we going to do with these two?
simultaneous equations, best way of solving a simultaneous equation in mechanics. On your calculators, so you're going to go to your simultaneous equation solver because we want to make sure we can be as quick as possible of this. We've got two unknowns and we're going to fill in our values. What did you get for you as um, to two decimal or to three significant figures? 0 0.293 and acceleration 4.21. Now we just need to be careful. We need to make sure that we give the correct units for this. So what would the units be for you? Good. It's kilometers per hour and this will be kilometers per hour per hour. Okay, they might, if, they, if the question said convert them to meters per second, you could convert them to meters per second. Or alternatively, you could have changed this from one hour. You could have changed it to seconds by multiplying it by 60 and then 60 again. And you could have changed this to meters by multiplying it by 1,000. So this particular case, I found it easier just to keep them in kilometers and hours. But if you wanted to, you could have changed it all to meters per second and stuff like that as well. So... This is very explicit now. If you feel like there's, there's hinting at simultaneous equations, they probably are going to be simultaneous equations. If you've got two things that are moving and it's constant acceleration and they're not asking you to draw a speed time graph, you're probably going to be doing simultaneous equations. There's just not an awful lot of these examples in the book. But there will be some simultaneous equations in today's lesson, and I'll be interested to see if you can spot that when it happens. Okay? Okay. <coughs>